So there are uh, 25,000, right? Uh, train is done, so test is being extracted. So in positive, there will be 12,500 and negative, there will be 12,500. So we'll know, right, you know, there will be folders and you know, review number and all that. So I'll show in a moment. There is an unsupervised data set also. So you, you know, I'll upload this uh, file and you download it and try to extract and do because this is going to occupy lots of space. Maybe I. I What the heck is taking too long? So in the unsupervised, whole 50,000 uh, kept in a single folder, I think. Okay, so we have got this data set. Let me check how much space it occupies. Oh my God. Yeah, so 200 MB it occupies, that's okay, I think. Let me put this whole thing into IMDB. Okay, IMDB data set and there is a train set inside it there are positive and negative folders right in the positive folder you see 0 underscore 9 1 underscore 7 2 underscore 9 like 0 is the first uh, file 9 is the review given to that and the review text you know uh, bro brovel high is a, a cartoon comedy it ran at the same time right whatever that you know so the whole review about that uh, particular movie and then one is the second review and the review given is seven inside it the review is like this right like that no there are 25000 reviews okay and there is lots of text in there and when you try to do the count factorization right it occupies lots of space and if you have 8 gb of ram uh, you try to execute this project, you will understand you know, how uh, how big data set we can handle and how small data set we can handle. Okay, definitely I would ask you to run this code and execute or you know try to do a bag of words model on your own. Okay, so that is the data set. And let us go back to code. Where IMDB, data, IMDB folder okay so data imdb okay okay good so right now i uh, let me run this code i kind of wrote some method to uh, calculate elapsed time how much time it is taking to process so these are the you know these you know in imdb review to csv file i am actually creating a csv file using these whatever reviews in the CSV file, we'll have a review and uh, the uh, the the output, right? The output means uh, um, 
what you call it as the y way y variable okay so for train set i am going to run it's going to take time it's actually forming a csv file for train set right for test set also it i'll run it is going to take time so i'll show you right when uh, we are trying to pre process the code how much time it takes okay text normalization how much time it takes and how much memory talk space also i'll show you output path here so here you know from pos uh, folder i took the data and in path pos folder and file name i am reading and then uh, i am appending that right and uh, i am incrementing the index and then data set i am forming data frame and two csv output directory the csv file name i don't want indexes i want a header right header row number review and polarity polarity is the label by by label okay let us see how much uh, space it is occupying see that almost 11 gb it is occupying right to do this uh, processing right to extract data and create that uh, csv file it is occupying 11 gb so this is just 25000 uh, reviews in real time right you will have millions of reviews in that case right you your csv file will not work then you need to place the data into a big data database uh, or a mongo db database and then while doing the code you need to pull one record at a time or maybe 10 records at a time are you getting are you getting what the problem i am trying to show here in real time train set is already done okay you you try to run it on your machine it is not going to work you know basically see you know if it is not running right uh, try to take it to the google collab and then run it there okay so test that you no know, don't try to open the train set here because it's going to like not say it's a 32 uh, 32 mb file it may it may stuck you know it may get stuck the machine may get stuck so we can actually load it using this uh, read csv and then look at the head and that actually shows you the clear you know whatever so let me complete this also because i don't have data set as the machine is new let me take to one or two more minutes any questions here on uh, the data So why am I showing this? Is in interviews, right? They may ask how big data set you worked on, and how like um, how did you handle it? If you have a little bit of idea here on 25,000 reviews, how the model is working, you can estimate and talk. Right? That way, you know, it, it sounds like you already worked on you know big data sets. So yeah, test set is also done. 
So we have got a train set and test set formed. And let us look at uh, the train set now, right? So I am no, not. This is not the folder. I need to take out. I loaded the data set. Now I have 25,000 reviews and three columns. And what are the columns? Row number, review, and polarity, right? That's how we actually, we actually opened the folder and took the file and then you know, appended that data, right? Index, index we appended, data we appended, and then kept the polarity as one, right? Rating as one for the positive reviews in the positive folder the reviews present in the positive folder we kept one the reviews present in the native folder we kept zero right so here if you see the head i think i kept some um, measurements here said display maximum column right if you don't set it right you will not be able to see this much of text it will show only you know a couple of uh, uh, words and then it will put dots so i kept you know column width and uh, expand frame and all that so, so I can see that you know the some of the reviews belong to zero, some of the reviews belong to one. This is the data set we are looking for. Right? The row number is not that important. We may remove that while building model. Now we have reviews and the target variable. Now if we have to build a model, what we should do? Do you remember? If we have to build a you know bag of words based model, what we should do? Do you remember? No. We we have to process it. Yeah, process it, right? To process what we need to, you know, while processing, what is the goal? And what is the end goal of this particular project? Con yeah. First, if if we get a new review, we need to predict whether it is you know, positive, or positive or negative. Yes, right. So to predict positive or negative. What kind of pre-processing we should be doing? We need to convert this text into numerical representation. Yes, numerical. But you know, can we take the text as it is, or do we need to clean up a little bit? Clean up, and we need to take uh, the words stemming vectorization, count vectorization. Yeah. So should we remove the stop words, or should we keep them in this? We should remove. Them. Yeah, we should stop remove, words. Right? Yeah, we should remove the stop words and then you know clean it up. I use this old way of uh, you know Stanford NLP. Now it is stands there. No, previously it was used to have a local server and then on that it, it used to run and Java based whatever stuff. But now it became easy, right? Stands is easy. You try it out, <coughs> right? So here I am using normal, you know. Uh, I have taken review and then you now. Um, so here, I think I commented out the code because it is taking time, right? It was taking around five minutes to run, but now we don't have that code, so we have to run this. So normalize the text. Where did I use it? Here, right? So let me come. I'll comment this. So I experimented with lemmatization corpus and stemming corpus both, right? So here, what am I doing? I am doing stemming, okay? Somewhere I did uh, lemmatization. Water stem roll I did here. Yeah, I did somewhere lemmatization also, but uh, that code is not there. Okay, that's all. So I have taken this normalized text. See this here, the same code what I used there, I just copy pasted. Lower case I did, and then non words I am actually removing them with you know, blank spaces. There are some dates, you know, and uh, these kinds of brackets, right? This is HTML code. We need to remove that all thing, right? And then uh, maybe br we should add it in stop words and remove that also. That these kinds of special characters we are removing, even numbers we are removing. Okay, so 
and then tokenizing it right st parser what is this st parser oh this will throw error st parser is not there right so Space tokenizer I should take. Okay. So I'll actually instantiate a but word punk tokenizer here WP right, and then uh, tokenize. Okay, now it will work, it will not throw error. Okay, I forgot to import it. Right, so Stanford thing is not going to work because the code the change the way we are actually using it. I think I should remove it. But, you know, let, let 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 it be there because if you try to experiment, you will get an error, and then you may um, actually try to you know, change it. Right now, I am actually calling. You know, I am actually taking the reviews at one review at a time, and then appending it to stemma car. You know, corpus. I am calling it as a corpus because each review is going to become a uh, you know. Uh, Clean up review, right? That uh, that's a you know uh, total thing will become a list of word, list of sentences. Okay, let me run this. It will take time. What? Okay. Tokenize is missing. What? I have written a generator here. Give me one second. What is it saying? So token is missing. We are passing review right here. The text is there. Give me one second, okay? Word punk tokenizer, how it works, we have to see. Maybe space token is whatever. Yeah, it takes text only. I'm passing text only. Guys, do you find any problem here? The method bases are missing. Ah, huh? sorry. When you instantiate or declare the class, no? variable is equal, variable equal to class. The closing and op opening and closing braces are missing. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is good. Maybe that is the reason, but uh, that's the reason. Okay. okay, let me let me interrupt this, you know. So here I wrote a I wrote a um, generator. Okay. I'll show you that also. Why generator also I'll explain. Okay. So I should not run these again. And if I run it right, it will going to take more time, right? So I have these, you know, I have these files already present in the present in the on the on disk, right? So I no need to run that. Okay. So 
so data is there now we are not running this right we are actually running this right so normalized text which is actually taking a list of uh, reviews okay uh, list of reviews are series object okay series object of reviews so imdb train is a data frame see this imdb train is a data set data frame and then reviews is a column right here i am passing the column to the method right and uh, i am getting processed review one at a time if you look at this this is not return this is yield okay in this for loop we are saying yield that means what it takes one review process it returns that only again one more review process it this method works like a for loop this method works like a, works like a iterator okay when you say yield right that method works like iterator it is taking one review at a time and processing it and reviewing it returning it if not right what will happen you actually may have to you know if you if you are not if you are not doing this yield thing what will you do you take one review pass it process it and append right no, like like no processing and so it is going to occupy more space okay in in this way it is not going to occupy that much space are you getting what i am actually talking here maybe i did not explain it properly but if you use a normal method with return it would have processed everything here and then it would have returned the whole thing in one one slot but if it is a yield method right it is taking one review at a time and processing it and sending it back what is the advantage here if you are you know if this is not a list if this is a database what will happen you take one review put it into database second review put it into database third review put it into database fourth review like that you are doing got it memory will be saved yes memory. sir sir i think um, the other way to say that is we are calling that function only once and then now in in for loop it's it's doing the multiple returns the yes, like sir. multiple returns so multiple returns if you have yes. one return it's doing multiple returns yes, for each yes. iteration of the inside for loop yes if and you do one return only right, once if you do one return right what is the problem you have to process all the reviews here and put it into a list and your memory may not be sufficient and list may not be able to you know able to store more than a certain amount of data right every data structure will have its own limitations right so that you know out of memory error you will definitely get it okay so here you are doing multiple iterations right you are sending one review at a time we are processing one review at a time and sending it back because of the yield this is called a generator these generators are very useful in python these generators are very very useful and very important try to understand how i actually did it try to put a return there right it will process one review and come back that is one way right if you don't put for loop here and then pass whole data in one shot you have to process everything and put it into a list and send it back here it may not make much sense but if you are using a database to sort store the processed data then it makes a huge difference okay got it can i move on okay so i am running this code right i to, okay i wanted to comment this out here i don't want to print right so it is actually processing one record at a time and putting it into the corpus so in real time you will be using a database here instead of taking a list and you now you know putting it into list you will take a database and dump it into the database and when you are building a model you will take it from database okay so here for safety right what i did i actually processed everything kept it into a list and then created a pickle file of it okay i saved that uh, that data into a pickle file so oh, stem corpus it is stem not lemma corpus so here i did stemming word uh, you know word net lemmatization i did lemmatization here i am not going to run lemmatization code right this is already taking time 
So, oh, I'm, oh my God, I, I think it took, it took around one, one hour to actually process this whole data and create. Let us see how much memory it is taking. See that 11 GB, 11 GB of RAM it is taking. And initially when you joined the course, right, I said that at least 16 GB, 8 GB, 16 GB is needed at whatever, right, because of this reason. This is just beginning, right, just the, this is just the beginning of, you know, the, the data sets with uh, high volume and, you know, the, the, when you enter NLP and image processing, definitely you need higher processing powers. No higher memory. On top of it, you need to work on Linux machine rather than Windows machine. You know, many of the NLP and uh, computer vision modules will not work on uh, the Windows machine. Even if you have to make them work, you need to install VC++ and all. There will be lots of trouble you know, to make uh, the modules, these Python modules work on Windows machine. Okay, so you should definitely try to do a dual boot on your machine, right, with uh, Ubuntu, maybe 18 or 20. And we should practice things on Ubuntu machine rather than Windows machine. Got it? Any questions there on the, on the software, OS? Is, is there any alternative, sir? Alternative means uh, Linux, any other alternative you can install? Or? No, not installing on our machine, but any online, something like Collab. Collab will, collab will work, but you know, Collab will have its own uh, drawbacks. You know, for practice it is okay, but when you are really working on a project, you should ask for these. Right? In a project, you should definitely ask for these. Collab will work, but every one hour it will actually, you know, uh, reconnect or whatever. When you start working on Collab, right, you will understand. So you, you have to keep the session active. Rather, it will actually disconnect. You cannot actually start it and leave. You need to monitor it and things like that. In our any team, cloud machine. Yeah, our team, uh, most of the times they are using Collab only because we don't have you know, huge uh, infrastructure, right? So they are using their own laptops to work and all that. So they are patient enough and working on the uh, Collab. And I generally not be stringent on timelines. So it works, but if, you know, in the industry, right, whatever you do doesn't matter. Time, by, by the time you reach timeline, right, you should show something, right? So that, that kind of situation, you should definitely have a good machine. Okay. Collab definitely you can use. Any cloud, cloud alternatives? Cloud alternative, there is, uh, I actually used one called, uh, uh, I forgot. Uh, give me one second. Let me look at uh, the document. I, uh, paper space. Yeah, paper space. Yeah, I blue. I also heard. Yeah, but you know, this this is not good. Right? This was not. I used it, and I actually spent around thirty-five to forty thousand dollars rupees on this. For one of the projects, I used it, but it's not good. You know, it's not good in the sense they will not maintain the latest up-to-date uh, versions of TensorFlow. Mm -hmm. uh, that was one problem. And um, sometimes the server automatically restarts. You run the module, you know, for uh, 10 days, and you you are you know about to finish, and the server restarts. That kind of problems I encountered. This one, and even in Amazon. AWS also we have machines with uh, GPUs. AWS and Azure also we have GPU machines, but they'll be expensive. They'll be expensive. For practice, right, you should never go to cloud. Somebody is paying, definitely you should go cloud. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, so it is going to take time. Let it let it be like that, and I'll actually save the file, the pickle file, and uh, upload it to the drive so that you can directly use it to build a model, right? But definitely you try out uh, the, you know, this code and you know, maybe take the data, raw data on your own, try to do your own stuff. But when it is not working, try to refer to the file because I kind of 
you know, I applied some of the you know, best practices here. Okay. So lemmatization also you can do WordNet lemmatizer. This is actually based out of uh, WordNet uh, data set. Whenever it is trying to find the root word, it look into this data set and try to find it. It's a labeled or you know, it's a data set with uh, some words which may present, which may be present in these reviews. If the word is not present, right, it will actually do rule based only. So it is finding root word. I did, that's the difference. Okay, and I tried to use different uh, kinds of uh, the lemmatizer and uh, stammer stammer data, and then you did, did a count vectorizer. Right, count vectorizer. I took you know start time, end time, how much time it is taking, and I cannot run the code. So I have taken count vectorizer, and then said n gram is equal to one comma one. I'll explain it in a moment. Then I did fit transform because it is on train set. I am doing fit transform and I'll get X. When I say fit transform and I get X right, the data set will have, see this, 70,340. What are they? Features, input features. Features, right? Words, distinct words in the data. There are 25,000 rows and 70,000 columns. I told you when when we start looking into NLP and computer vision, we will have high dimensional data. Right? We entered into high dimensional space now. So, you know, these these machine learning algorithms will be able to do very little when your data set is like this. So, on this data set, can I apply linear regression algorithm? Or logistic regression algorithm? This is a classification model, right? So, yeah, once they are converted into some numbers or whatever it is, yeah, we should be able to do that. Uh, no, it is, it is already converted to numbers. You know, there are 70,340 uh, uh, distinct words and this many rows. You know, this is a matrix and each cell will have a number. How many times each word occurred in each of these uh, you know, reviews? The data is converted to numbers. Can I apply logistic regression? Yeah, we should be able to apply logistic regression. Yes, right. But you know, if it is a if it is a normal equation based based algorithm, right, we cannot because number of columns are more than number of rows. Got it? To solve n number of equations, n number of uh, uh, variables, parameters. You need at least n number of equations, right? Yeah. Right. We are using stochastic gradient descent, so we can do it because it's a, it's a you know one record at a time and multiple iterations and all that, right? So we can actually you do it. Okay. So I took the SGD and then fitted the model with x and y. What is x here? This is x. Right. Y is zeros and ones and predicted and calculated accuracy score. I got 93% accuracy. Okay. I saved the model. Right. Now I am going to test it on a different machine. What what all should I take from here? I want to test my model on a different machine, or a, no? I want to move this model into production. What all what all we I should be taking it from here? The pickle file. Yeah, model. this the pickle model file. pickle file. Yeah, right. What else? And the tokenizer. Yes, sir. count vectorizer. Count vectorizer. Right. Count vectorizer also we should take. See this, I dumped it. You no, know, count vectorizer I dumped into a pickle file and the model also I dumped into pickle file. If you do some normalization, you no know, text normalization, standardization, right? You should actually take that also because when you are doing text standard scaling, you are calculating mean and standard deviation of each column and using that to convert your data. And if you're doing min max scaling on the train data, you are actually taking minimum and maximum of each column. You are actually using that to convert. You should use same minimum maximum on the test set and production also. You should use same mean and standard deviation on test and production also. So whatever fit operations happen here, all those should be saved and we'll be taking them to the other machine. Suppose that we moved on to other machine. This is the other machine. Okay. So now I'm going to load the test set. I had a look at the test set and then I again you now try to do lemmatization of it. So here, right, uh, uh, 
uh, in lemmatization is there any understanding is there in text normalization is there any understanding do we need to move the understanding to um, the, the te test and production in the train set is there any understanding here fit operation any fit operation happen no but we need to use the same method i believe same method that's a good thing right the same code we need to transport to wherever we are actually going right this is the production move right if you know which one to save which one to take with you whether you are building a web application or web service or whatever it, it doesn't matter right you take this code put it here and then process it right and then right you load the Oh, uh, count vectorizer here, and then you are actually doing transform only. Count vectorizer and transform on the corpus, and then you got x, you got y. See this? If you don't use the same count vectorizer, right? If you don't use same count vectorizer, what you have to do? If you are not using this, what you have to do? Suppose you know if you are doing a wrong way, right? If you are not using this, means you are doing a wrong way. so if we are not doing not using that uh, what will change here on this part create a new count vectorizer and fit transform yeah you need to instantiate a new count vectorizer and then say fit transform if you do fit transform will the dimensionality change it may change it may change it will definitely change not may it will definitely change yeah. right your statement is right because sometimes fortunately you may get the same number of columns but you know that is actually misleading right misleading right so the number of records in this test set are going to be less and the number of distinct words are going to be less and you will get a different dimensional data and when you try to pass it to predict right it will throw error saying the dimensionality is not matching got it why why that that error will come if the dimensionality is not matching it will say Uh, it will throw an error saying that dimensionality is not matching why why will why will that say why will that error will come did you understood my question yeah for train set and test set we have the similar number of columns for predict to make the prediction sir i cannot hear you could you please speak a little louder i am on that yeah, yeah, am i audible sir maybe my I speaker problem but you know Yeah, my, my audible no. You are audible, but you know your voice is not clear. Please. Okay. Everybody else uh, is giri audible? Yes, sir. We can hear him. Yes. Okay. Could could you please uh, repeat what he said? Yeah. So what I'm saying is, in the train set and test set, the the columns should match. Otherwise, we because we built a model based. Yes. 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 to make a prediction uh, at least the column should match so that's yeah. where we, we get that mismatch uh, yeah the equation will have that many number of terms yeah. right when you train the model the ultimate equation will have this many number of terms right so the same term should be there you know the value should be there for that that equation right so it will throw error so right so so this is the production move thing you need to remember what all fit operations happened and what is the code you used in your train set you should actually move all the to test and production okay so that's what we did here and then build so i'm going to upload these two files and then you know you guys need to practice on this right it is still taking time i leave this like this and i'll upload the stem corpus so that you can actually run some part of the code okay so that is about a bag of words on a big data set this is this is just an example big data set this is not at all a big data set i would say in real time you will get huge data sets millions of documents okay millions of documents with each each document maybe 80 90 pages maybe 100 pages so it's going to be too huge okay so then you should definitely rely on database databases to save and then stochastic approaches only work either while processing right are while building models stochastic stochastic approaches will work so now can you tell me svd svm algorithm will it work on this data set which algorithms can i use on this particular data set that's the question 
an algorithm selection. We know, right, um, maybe, you know, five, six algorithms, right, by now. Which algorithm can I use on this particular data set? Can I use kernel SVM? Is it advantageous or disadvantageous if I use kernel SVM? Is it advantageous or disadvantageous if I use kernel SVM? What will happen if you apply kernel trick on the data? It transforms the data into a new dimension, actually. New dimension. So what is the dimension? New dimensions? Row by rows, right? Rows by rows, right? Yeah. Right? It's going to reduce the dimensionality. 25,000 by 25,000 data set it will become, right? It is going to be advantageous only. Number of you know, columns will reduce and now we can apply the um, kernel SVM here, and we can actually definitely use SGD classifier, right? So you try it out, you know, try it out, try out the kernel SVM. How is how is it going to work? You know, is it occupying too much memory or not? So memory is a big constraint in you know in applying algorithm. Can I use random forest on this particular data set? I think yes. Um, may not be because you know memory, right? The, the the tree, all trees gets built in in memory, right? So we we may not have you know sufficient space to build it. These are the questions you need to answer while practicing. Got it? What is the use of uh, doing all this practice? What is the use of uh, doing all this practice? Whatever I am actually trying to tell now. What is the use? Is we there any use? Understand. We will understand uh, for what kind of data which algorithm yes, needs to be used. Good, yes, that's a very, very, very important question in interviews. Okay, you learned many things. You know concepts. Right now, where which works, you should actually have a clear picture. Once you put hands on on a on this kind of data set, you will get complete clarity. You know, till now, even if you don't practice anything, that's okay. Right? Even if you don't know algorithm, just try to apply it and see how much memory it is occupying. Right? And uh, is there any alternative way? Right? This is this is the analysis you need to do. If you do this analysis, you need to work on two data set definitely. One credit card fraud detection anomaly detection that is definitely you should work okay second the imdb data set with the different machine learning algorithm because if you know the limitations of machine learning you will know the importance of deep learning okay got it will you practice these two data sets shall we make a tomorrow session a practice session if you if needed right i'll take classes on saturday and sunday So or you guys will handle it. Give us time uh, next couple of days and we will do the practice on Saturday. Okay then. Okay then. Okay. Good. You know, tomorrow means people. Some people may may get some time or not. Okay. Good. Good, sir. We'll 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 you know. Definitely, you need to practice and show me right on the uh, anomaly detection and the IMDb data set. You should practice and show me because if you don't do this practice, your four months. Or four and a half months is going to go waste. Okay. You will be ready for interview. If you do practice on these two data sets, you will be ready for interview. Okay. Believe me. Okay. So that's about uh, the you know the IMDB data set and bag of words and how to move it into test and production and all that. Okay. So um, uh, when you say IMDB data set uh, working with different models, uh, uh, that's uh, some something earlier one, sir. Not yeah, the, you, the we, one, right? we we know SGD, sir. We know yeah. 
logistic regression yeah. we know knn yeah. we know svm we know kernel svm we know pca right if you apply pca what happens if you know if you apply kernel pca and apply svm what happens if you just apply kernel svm what happens right if you apply random forest what happens if you apply, apply you know uh, decision tree what happens if you apply bag of uh, bagging you know what happens these are all the things you need to factor Uh, on the current one you are saying yeah current one is correct okay got it. yeah got it okay. right so i am going to upload this uh, corpus you know whatever the pre processed data i will upload if you want you can use that pre processed data and do it and you can do your own pre processing also you need to see how much load it is taking to do pre processing see this here it is still not done right i have run it i have ran it like i think it is done Yeah, it is done. So let us see. No, still not done. Where is it? This is test set, right? So here, see this? It is still running. It is still running. Pre-processing is still running, right? So you need to practice these things. Okay. So you know, there is a, I thought of explaining hashing vectorizer today, but tomorrow I'll explain hashing vectorizer and then we'll start the uh, information retrieval concepts. Or maybe you know we know SVD singular value decomposition, right? We'll talk about topic modeling and then go into information retrieval. You know, kind of I'm thinking where to go, but. This is a this is another way to convert your uh, data into numerical, but here we are going to collapse some of the features into one feature. When there are too many features, right? Maybe I'll cover this here. And hashing vectorizer is a simple thing, right? Which which actually tries to calculate hash code for each feature. See this? There is a like, right? For like it will calculate hash code. For the it will calculate hash code. For movie, it will cal calculate hash code. Instead of using the tokens, it will use hash codes as the column num columns. Instead of using uh, the, the tokens, it will use hash codes as columns. What will happen? You know, when you have billion words, if you calculate hash codes for billion words, some of the words may get same hash code. Right? Collapsing means what? You you know you try to you try to put Maybe ten words into one bucket. Right, fifty-three will actually map to maybe ten words. Seven one three may map to hundred words. Another may map to. So, what you are trying to do is by calculating random hash code, you are trying to reduce number of columns. Is this the right way? No. When you have billion words in your data set, it may work. Right. We are actually trying to make a two-dimensional data set. With which you can actually build a machine learning model. So I'll explain this tomorrow very clearly. Okay. One second, sir. Uh, when you said uh, uh, we'll reduce the number of columns, uh, how hashing will help in reducing the number of columns? So the, the, we'll actually, you know, for each word there will be a there will be a hash code generated. See this yeah. here? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. So see this here, right? This is the hashing function, right? Yeah. Character code, ASCII code of First character into p, it's a prime number. Yeah. Plus second character actually ASCII code into p to the power of one, like that and so on. P to the power of n. If there are n characters in your word, in your token, right? If p to the power of n, you will multiply and you calculate the hash code, right? Once after calculating your hash code, right, you will divide or you know you will take the uh, mod operator. What is mod operator will give? Um, Uh, the remainder right you will take the remainder of remainder of uh, that hash code yeah. right that is the ultimate hash code okay here we are calculating hash and then dividing with one number and taking the remainder right if you divide with uh, if you divide any number with uh, 1024 you will get numbers between 0 and 1024 that's it right 1023 Yes, sir. Right? Do you agree? Yes, sir. Yes, right. The statement, the 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 statement is like this, right? If you if you 
if you divide any number with 10 and you are taking only remainder right you will get a maximum 0 to 9 0 to 9 numbers only if you take 1 divided by 10 the remainder is going to be 1 if you take 11 divided by 10 the remainder is going to be 1 if you take 12 divide no divide with 10 the remainder is going to be 2 mod operator will give you remainder right not the coefficient getting it right yes if you take 19 divided by 10 you will get 9 if you take 20 divided by 10 0 you will get right if a if a token got 20 as the hash if a token has got 10 as hash both will merge into 0 right whenever you get that word or this word you will put count into this yeah but that's not correct right because that's we... not correct that's not correct yeah. that's what i am saying i never used it but sure. this is one technique in interviews they are asking. Some people are asking, if you have 1 billion data set, you mm -hmm. want to build a machine learning model, what you will do? I will not build a machine learning model. I go for deep learning. Sure. That's the answer. And if you still want to do it, hashing vector is the way. Right? It will actually collapse. You know, it's, it's, it's actually creating. You know, this is what we, we made sure when we looked into uh, the bag of words. Right? We always try to... See that when you when you when you are doing lemmatization or stemming, two words are not getting mixed up, right? So, but here intentionally we are mixing it up. That it? Yes, sir. Yeah. Tomorrow, so, right? I, I, two unrelated words can get uh, get into the same. Ah, uh, two unrelated, two unrelated or two or more unrelated words may get same hash code because of this logic, mm -hmm. they, you know, mod operation logic. If yes. it is only hash code, right? We can make it unique, but there is no use, right? Instead of taking hash code as column, you can take the column names itself as column, right? But to collapse, reduce the dimensionality, we are using a you know technique like this. So however big number you take, that many number of features you'll get, maximum. Right? It is 10 to 2 to the power of 32, it is, I think. 2 to the power of 64 you take, and like that. You know, it's a, it's a parameter to be hashing vectorizer. I'll show tomorrow. Okay. And I said, you know, the bigrams, you know, n-grams also. I'll talk about this also tomorrow. Okay. I'm going a little slow. Intention intentionally, I'm going a little slow. Right. If I go fast, right, you will you will miss points. You may get it, but you may you may miss points. 